new on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying Black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the Black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Right, castle on the way. Once again, we'll sit and spend one last time for 2020. We've got uh, 10 artists who hated their own hit songs, and all these songs are hits, and most of these songs you probably like, but believe it or not, they don't. They don't like it, and they don't want to play it live either. So, uh, Ryan, on the way, right after emails and our question, what did you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? This is a pretty crazy story. Uh, no one obviously wants to hear their doorbell ring in the middle of the night, because that's normally not a good thing. You expect to know when people are sure. on their way, one way or another, but in the middle of the night, it's a little bit different. There have been a couple stories about people who recently just woke up in the middle of the night because someone was banging on their door. Guy goes outside with a shotgun. Guess what? There were four cops outside, and he's not around anymore. Just because he went outside, because he was like, who's knocking on my door this right. early? Uh, he's, he's not waking up. But anyway, uh, the door rings in the middle of the night, but they're going to give uh, Bob Wilson a pass. That is because Wilson, who won the Nobel Prize in economics, was forced to trudge out in his pajamas to alert his Stanford colleague. They had co-won the prize together. After the Nobel Committee could not reach the man, uh, Paul Milgram, by phone. He had actually set it to silent mode. Video taken from Milgram's Nest camera shows Wilson and his wife, who live across the street, show up at his front door in the middle of the night, ringing the doorbell several times, before Milgram is finally startled and roused from his sleep. Paul, it's Bob Wilson, Wilson says. You've won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Most of what uh, Milgram says in the video is inaudible, except for the one-word reaction of, wow. Sure, that's fair. I think that might be a first. Uh, someone comes knocking in the middle of the night and uh, basically telling you that uh, you won the biggest award that you can in your field. Uh, Stanford University also shared the video online. Uh, Smith asked Milgram how he and Wilson were able to collaborate so effectively together uh, to bring home the coveted prize. He says, I think we were uh, both a little bit, we're both nerds in a certain way, and it just happened we live close by. So either way, Damn. they could they could work after they got done with uh, the regular job. So our question, what did you sleep through or uh, what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, Ted, we have an update. Uh, you're talking All about right. the movie Untamed Heart. Correct. Which again... The premise of this, as far as you've explained it, sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. Found it very funny. So anyway, you said, look, I'm telling you, your wife has seen it. So I texted her. Have you seen Untamed Heart? Christian Slater has a baboon heart. Her response, quote, are you serious? Of course I have. I cry every time I watch it. Why do you ask? My response is that we, we were just talking about it. Ted guaranteed that you'd seen it. I said I'd ask. I'd never heard of it and was laughing at the premise. She responds, he was sick as a baby prior to the real heart transplant. Uh, we might have to watch it. No. Oh, no. No. Uh, no. I don't want to watch the movie. Family movie uh, night is when? Oh Sunday God. night when you guys do uh, that? Usually it's Friday night. Friday night. I don't think it's appropriate for the children. Really? Well, I mean, I, she's getting followed home and then he protects her. I don't know. To be honest with you, your kids just wouldn't like it. I'll tell you what. If I got to watch it, they're watching it with me. That's how that's going to work. I can, as much as I knew she had seen it, I know you will hate it. I'm right. I don't want to see it. I don't care. It's, it's, well, I guess it's not a comedy, but it's, it's a romance. I mean, it's a baboon heart. I don't care. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, sorry, man. I mean, do Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Hello, Ginian. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. <laughs> So I woke up to not having killed my cat in my sleep. You woke and up to not having killed your cat. I think most yeah. people do. I wake up most <laughs> days that way. Yeah, it makes me happy. It's called being a cat owner. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I almost did. And it's because I was trying to quit smoking. And so I was wearing the nicotine patch. 
and I fell asleep, and I did not read the instructions on the on the nicotine patch. I had no idea it would cause sleep disturbances. So I had this wild dream where I just rampaged all over my apartment, trashed my apartment, and ripped my cat's head off. Jesus and I Christ. literally, <laughs> yeah. And then what happens is, is that I wake up standing up in my living room and I look around and my apartment's totally trashed and my cat is sitting at my feet and he looks up at me and goes, meow. I was so terrified that I had, I killed my cat and my, I just ripped the cat's head off in my sleep. That nicotine patch came right off. I had totally destroyed my apartment in my sleep. I had come this close to actually kept killing my cat, but my brain somehow woke me up before that actually happened. Did your cat you offer what? you a cigarette? Like, hey, yeah. how about you go back to say, Did you go outside and smoke a cigarette at that point? I did, and to tell you what, I've never tried quitting smoking again. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'd like to see your... Hey, I'm Ray Liotta. Yeah, I quit smoking. And then I rip my cat's head off. I'll tell you what, you know what, you man, back in, uh, back, back, when things get back to normal, I'll tell you a really good trick that helped me quit smoking for a couple times, right? A couple times. Yeah, yeah. seriously, <laughs> seriously. Uh, Every it, time I quit, it works. Yeah, it, 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 and it does for the three months afterward. Go to Las Vegas. Yeah. Las Vegas, okay. you can smoke all the time, right? So you do. So, you know, when you're just sitting there playing slots and stuff, you don't realize it like, oh boy, I'm on a pack and a half right now. Now we're going out late. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm on two packs of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So you'll yeah. smoke so much that you don't even realize it. And then when you come home and you open up your suitcase <sighs> and you realize what you smell like because you don't understand it as a smoker, how bad you reek. Yeah. That's always one where I'm like, oh, God, I need to take a break from cigarettes for a while. That's true. <laughs> I mean, it always psychologically helps me. I, I never but, follow through the whole way. But, but with Vegas, it's smoking, it's cocaine, it's drinking. It's everything right. that keeps you up. And in two days, you have done more of any of those things than you've done mm -hmm. in the last five years, right? And Every time walking, I get when back. you're walking around, when you walk outside, you have another cigarette. You know what I mean? You know you can smoke inside. But the weird thing about it is we're so conditioned uh, to be uh, outdoors when we smoke. I know. I still go outside. It is very – typically, I'll, I'll still step outside in Vegas to go get a smoke. And I know that's ridiculous, but I do. But it's what you do. And uh, it's almost it's not, your yeah. comfort now. Well, they, t they typically keep the smoking area to the gaming area sure, exclusively. Sure. So once you want to get out of that environment a little bit, you know what I mean? You just kind of pull back. And if you're sitting at a bar, there's a bunch of people smoking, which that's that's their prerogative. I, I just prefer it. Just I, I, It's weird. It's like throwing the toilet paper away in their trash can. For me. But see, now I like going outside. When they first introduced the rule, like 12 years ago, whatever it was, it was annoying as hell. Now I'm like, yeah, I like actually stepping outside. It's well, amazing yeah. to me the people you meet. So like in our old building, Miles and I give nicknames to everybody. Sometimes... They're always descriptive, not always positive. But Miles and I would talk about certain people. And Ted, I always remember, he'd be like, man, who are you talking about? And it occurred to us, right, you don't smoke. Right. So it's like there's this whole other group of people you meet. You know, all the smokers, you all get to know each other. You're all familiar. And I'm like, God, there's so many, like, boxy lady. So many people we wish you could have seen so you could understand why we have horrible nicknames. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes just people that work here in the building. Like, I see them a couple times a day and say hi. And then it's like, <clears throat> how do you guys know all their names? In oh, right, right. Room? Like, oh, yeah, because you're, you're down there. Smokers Club. But, yeah, hey, you're it. right in Vegas. Light them yeah. up. Uh, Give me like, a menthol. Like, two, two, three <laughs> nights in a row, I saw this guy outside of a bar in Fremont, right? Uh -huh. Get off the bus. He's standing out in front of this bar. It's 9 o'clock at night, whatever the deal is. He's like, hey, man, because I smoke as soon as I get off the bus. You know I mean? I light one right. up. He's like, hey, man, can I bum the smoke? And I'm like, sure, man, no problem. He's like, I always smoke when I drink. Yeah, here you go, man. I'm, I'm drunk. Off. Next night, I swear to God, get off the bus. There he is again. He's like, hey, man, can I get a smoke? And I'm like, you only smoke when you drink, right? I gave you one last night. He's like, how'd you know? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, dude, here's one. Two days later, he's out there again, all right? And this time he's with his buddy and he's smoking. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and he's like, I know, I know, man. He's like, I'm going to buy a pack. I'm like, dude, it's okay. You, you, you just, you only smoke when you drink, but you seem to drink all the time. Right. So maybe get yourself a pack of cigarettes and then, because I don't see you sober. So I guess that's when you don't yeah, smoke. I only smoke when I drink, but I'm but a drunk. Can you even tell if he goes into the bar? Exactly. Or is this just a shtick? Right. What did you uh, sleep through or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. Okay, well, first thing I got to say is that don't ever try and hang with Germans when it comes to drinking alcohol. I have okay? heard this. I've heard because, Germans and Russians. Like, just don't even try. Yeah, it, it, it's not a good idea. They will drink under the table. And, and it's So anyhow, my buddy and I, Paul, 
had went to the Hard Rock Cafe about Pushnach, Germany, West Germany at the time. Friday night, meet some ladies, uh, close out the Hard Rock, go back to their place, uh, one of their houses or whatever. We, we do more shots and more beers. And, you know, now we're talking like three or four in the morning. And the last thing I remember was I was... Uh, no. You know why? And then I, I I wake up my buddy Paul standing over me combing his hair, and and, and I'm like, what's up? Where, where's Anka at? He's like, oh, she she had to go to work. She seemed seemed kind of mad. What happened? You know? And I'm like looking around this room, and it's like a little boy's room with racing car wallpaper, and we're on like a racing car bed and stuff. But I guess you know he's staying with his dad that weekend or whatever, and. And I was just like, I don't know, dude. The last thing I remember was, you know, I was taking care of business, and then here I am waking up all alone. But in my defense, it was late in the morning, and I've been up since 5 a.m. Well, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question, because I just, it, I'm not familiar with culturally. What, 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 what kind of shots do Germans typically do? Um, well, even then, this was like 87, 88, tequila was was all around. Okay. You could do shots of tequila or schnapps, right? See, That's schnapps a biggie makes there. Sense. That's kind of like their version of, of moonshine. Now, the thing is, I'd always like, the only schnapps I'd ever done here in the States was, of course, like the peppermint schnapps or the peach schnapps with fuzzy navels and stuff like that. Um, I've also been to, like, German farmers who said, would you like to try my homemade schnapps? That's when you need to get ready because <laughs> oh. you think, oh, a, a shot of some peppermint schnapps? Or, yeah, sure, let's do it. No, no, no. This is like moonshine. This is like, you know, high proof. Uh, there's no flavoring like, you know, peppermint or peach or whatever. It's just, you know, straight schnapps, and it'll knock you on your butt. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll tell you what. All right. Yeah, I would well, try it. Though. As many pictures as you see, Oktoberfest and these huge mugs of beer or whatever. I just, I, it, it seems like there's steins and there's tap handles. Right, but, you always think I, beer. I, I never but. see like the liquor b at the back of the bar. You know what I mean? Like I told you, my buddy lived in Prague for a year, and he was like, you could always tell Americans and Canadians because they would do shots. Like it's a big beer culture. He just said they didn't do a lot of shots. Same there. with Mexico, because in Mexico ah. you're sipping. Correct. It's a, yeah, the uh, it's the speed as they explained to me, they said one in Mexico tequila's not big. They're like. We look at tequila, I don't know, the way the average U.S. citizen, no offense to Budweiser, but it's just it's just something that's there. It's not special, but they're all about the mezcal, because mezcal is a lot purer than tequila. That's the thing. And they said, one of the things that blew their mind were Mexico City a couple of years ago. And the guy goes, man, it just blows my mind. Because in Mexico, it's not that tequila's looked down on. It's just it's just crappy alcohol, right? Uh it said, but somehow the way they they've marketed it in the states, they're like U.S. citizens love tequila, so now we stock it up because you guys are coming here and like crush bottles. I'm like, you goddamn right. So he explained. He said, look, but tequila has a lot of impurities where the mezcal doesn't. So he told us this. I didn't know that I believed him, but I was willing to give it a try. So essentially, there you buy a bottle of mezcal, and then you and your buddies you you hang out at the table and, and you drink it until you know, it's done. Yeah. So and, and we pretty much managed to accomplish that. But he said, here's the difference. When you wake up tomorrow, you're going to think you're hungover, but you're not. He said, just drink one pint of water, and I'm telling you, it all goes away. Assuming you just stick with mezcal. Right. Man. He was right. Like, we polished a bottle of mezcal, and we were plenty drunk, man. Stumbled back to the hotel, passed the hell out, woke up the next morning, we each chugged a glass of water, absolutely fine. And that's the most dangerous awesome. part, is drinking water. In Mexico. <laughs> yeah, in Mexico. Oh, exactly. <laughs> what, uh, what did you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Hunter. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. Uh, so after college, uh, my folks took me and my sister, my brother-in-law, uh, on a Mediterranean cruise. And uh, before we uh, we flew out, I uh, I borrowed or borrowed I got a, a Xanax bar from a friend for the flight. Sure. And. Uh, I don't know if you've been on a cruise before, but so, you know, international flight, you know, unlimited drinks. I get to Athens, Greece, and uh, first one on the ship. I don't know if you've been on a cruise before, but they do this thing called the, uh, they, they do a basically a rundown of if you're going to, you know, the ship's going to sink. Yep. There's a thing called the muster station. 
So everybody on the whole ship is pretty much in the, the dining room of the boat, except I'm passed out in my room. And uh, the lady who's in charge of cleaning my room had, had said it was cleared, but I was asleep on the other side on the couch, not on the bed. So I wake up to the second officer, uh, like the lady that's cleaning the room, a ship's mate, everybody's like dressed in white captain's gear, and I'm all messed up, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, thinking the ship's going down. They bring me out into the main room where everyone on the whole ship's looking at me, where I'm holding up the whole, you know, departure of the whole cruise, and I'm looking for my family, and they're hiding, you know, going, I don't know this guy. <laughs> so for the rest, of, the rest of the cruise, everybody knew me. Oh, you're that guy. Yeah, I was that guy. But did that make you more popular as the cruise went on? Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it's okay. funny how that works. Yeah. Do you know how long you held up the ship for? Oh, God, no. Uh, my parents said it, it was, they were looking for me for like 45 minutes. Plus, you're upside down. Time change, everything else. Right, You're going to get it's... hammered on the plane. I mean, there's a lot more going into it than just you being drunk. He's not kidding, though. Before the cruise takes off, they, they broke ours down into, like, different groups. So levels, blah through blah, you meet in this place. And look, I'm not a... And every time I get on a plane and they go through all the stuff, you know, the oxygen mask and your seatbelt, completely ignore them. One, I know the drill, too. I, whatever. On the ship, all I'm thinking is Titanic, right? Because I'm not that mm -hmm. excited to get on a cruise ship in the first place. It was a great experience, but going into it, I'm not terribly excited. So when they did that security thing, for the entire week we were on that boat. Because everyone I went with, I'm like, do you know where to go if this, if this thing starts to go down? Oh. They're like, I don't, I'm like, deck K. Door, man, I had that. Every single thing they said, I retained a memory. You're the last one on the boat, though. The women, the children, you know what I mean? All the important people go first, That's right? what you think. Is that how it goes, though? I mean, You're, to this day? In other no. words, is that still the Titanic thing? Like, women and children first? No, because they haven't organized. Thanks to the Titanic, many it things have changed. It will, I mean, look. Basically, they take the number of people that are on the, on the cruise, uh, and based on how many decks they have, blah, 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 and they break it down so that maybe there's six different groups each have their own exit, essentially, and then out of these exits, so now you're just on the deck of the boat, but there's a, a number of lifeboats designated for you. So my thought is, it doesn't really need to be women and children first, because it's not going to be if I'm there, because they've already made their estimation of the number of people. Okay. Like, we should all fit. So I'm just going to go ahead and climb on this lifeboat and, and wait. Mm. Yeah, like, sorry, bro. If a boat's going down, like, I need off this boat. What, uh, what did you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. That other, in that guy's defense, too, <clears throat> I'm not big on prescription drugs, but one night, same thing. So he's like, do you want a Xanax bar? I was like, sure. But what the person didn't tell me was like, they should have just said, hey, I've hung out with you. I know you like to drink alcohol. You need to not right. drink alcohol with this. Same thing. It's, it's called a Xanax bar? Yeah, well, Zandy Bar. Yeah, Zandy, yeah. I've never had that. I've had the pill before, but I didn't know. Okay, was it a chocolate or something? No, that is the no, same thing. The, the pill size. is the bar. The oh, they pill. call it a bar. Yeah, yeah it I've looks never like heard a that. tiny little bar. Oh, Zandy Bar. Oh, I've never had that one before. Man, oh, man. Johnny Manziel has a tattooed on his arm. No. Really? I don't yeah. think he'll regret that. Uh, but yeah, same thing happened to me. And the next morning, you know, you, it's one of those scary ones where you wake up and there's just like, your clothes are in your place, like, you're there, but just right. like, what in the hell happened? Right. right, there's zero recollection. The socks are still in the shoes. <laughs> what did you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Marshall. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hey, guys. First, uh, long time listener, first time caller, so I'm going to get a little nervous. But, yeah, so uh, me and my wife were uh, taking a nap uh, about four or five months ago. We woke up to our dog barking. There was some loud knocking going down. And uh, I listen in, and um, I hear, I hear, bang, 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 ATF open up, bang, 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 ATF open up. Turns out there was a big ATF breach for the guys in the apartment below us. Um, I guess, uh, I guess, like, the uh, the lease owner's uh, son was, like, a wanted fugitive, and then there was a uh, whole drug paraphernalia involved. I mean, these guys were armed with the teeth, and they just breached the door below us. Did you, <laughs> did you have an idea? I mean, typically you kind of know if there's things going on, you know. What I mean? Or was this just one of those things like where you didn't know who you live beside? Oh, absolutely! Like, yeah, you like you said, you like you you like uh, know the person, and like these people weren't really liked in the whole building. I mean, they they constantly they constantly you could smell it. They constantly looked at it. It wasn't around the complex, but but yeah, they, they just they had nice people. They kept themselves a lot. Yeah, you could tell. They, okay. they were something else, but I didn't think 
wanted fugitive drug paraphernalia. Yeah, I don't right, generally right, think right. that. No, I don't either. That's, that's, that's what happened in the house that I lived in when I was 20 years old. It was divided into... Probably three different apartments, but we had the the, the main part of the house, right. five bedrooms in it, and all that stuff. But there were uh, two uh, apartments below us. That's where my buddy Brett blew up all of the beer that he was trying to yeah, make in his yeah, first yeah. home brew attempt. But within the basement, there were two doors that went to apartments. So it was a main basement area with a washer and a dryer, but within that room were two doors, were two apartments. Okay. And one day we came home, cops had surrounded our house. Apparently, one of those guys were wanted for murder, and he had bolted. Jesus. We knew this Dude. guy. He'd come up and said, hey, man, you might have a beer with you guys. You know what I mean? I do. If we had a keg or I do not. Right. We're like, <laughs> get like, in here, you crazy son like, of a bitch. They're like, have you seen him? And we're like, no, we haven't actually seen him in a while. And they went down there. All stuff was there. Everything. All his clothes. Everything. He just... He knew. Somebody tipped his ass Yeah, he never came back. What'd you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. You're the one who protects the flock, and that requires an eye for detail. Because when safety and well-being are on the line, it's the details that can save lives. Even when no one else is watching, you see everything. Granger gets you, and we're here for you, and all the ones who get it done with a wide range of safety products and solutions, plus board-certified safety consultants here to answer your questions. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You're in the men's room. 99.9 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. All right, Castle on the way. We will send spin. We've got 10 artists who hated their own uh, hit songs coming up after emails on our question. What did you sleep through or what did you wake up to? 206 421 Rock. Hello, John. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great, John. Thanks, man. All right, so I've been in the Navy for about two years now. Uh, recently went on my first underway with the submarine, and that's another thing. I'm on submarines. Not the best job in the world, I'll tell you that. How long uh, How long are you submerged? Uh, we were under submerged close to almost 95 days. Okay. No, thank you. With with no idea what's up, what's down, uh, what day it is, what what time it is, how hard is it to just even get a sleep schedule? Because, you know, it gets dark at night, you start getting tired, and you're right, on right. at 4.30 when the, when the whatever sun we have goes down. I mean, how, how does that work when you're on a sub? So pretty much we just say according to what's a, on a watch bill. If you're on watch, uh, you'll be up for that time, plus a few extra hours afterwards to get maintenance or work done. And then after all that is done, you'll get about probably about five hours of sleep maximum. Okay. Damn. Okay. And then you're right back at it again. So another, you know, 13, yep. 14 hour day. Yep. And it repeats. Okay. So, so what? Are, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, go ahead. So, so what, what, what was the deal with your sleep? So for sleeping, there's one thing that you are afraid to hear go off when you sleep and they will wake you up in the deadest of sleeps. And that is the ventilation. You hear those ventilation fans go up. It doesn't matter how sound asleep you are. You are up and at them just like that. Is that because it's a trigger for something bad or because it's just so loud that there's no way you can sleep through it? So that's actually both. Once uh, you get used to the fans, they turn off. All right, now you're awake. But it's also meaning, one, you just lost a vital, ba- a vital bus, which is power, or... We have a fuego going on. 
And so does this happen every well, day or just every once in a while? Is this a, is this a regular occurrence or is this just, you know, once a week this thing happens and you're alerted? So the command, what they like doing to make sure that we stay on our toes about combating a casualty is they'll run drills. But they won't tell us when they're going to run drills. All right. So you'll find out when it's a drill when you actually see lights instead of an actual fuego. Okay. All right. And uh, what was the hardest part, it, it, all things considered, uh, about that assignment for you? Hardest part would probably be getting qualified. I was sent there to get qualified submarines for, on my first underway. Managed to get that done. Made my command really happy. And probably the other hardest thing would be just getting used to the environment. Okay. And, and like, look, if you're a ship, you're on top of the water. You, know, you you might not say what your mission is or anything like that, but it just seems like people who are uh, submariners, so to speak, they're, you're you're just not allowed to talk about anything. You right. know what I mean? Like, not, yeah, you, you're not there. Is that is that is that is that the right thing? Like you don't tell, you don't say, "Hey, I'm in the Mariana Trench, man. We're down, you know, twenty nine thousand <laughs> feet." You don't you don't talk like that. You just say, "Like, well, we popped up in Hong Kong, right?" right. I mean, is that how it goes? Um, no, we don't even say. Uh, so, especially for the type of boats that I'm on. We don't say where we're at or when we've been or wherever we've been. We are literally just a hole in the water, dead silent. And you do you know where you are? Nope. Okay. So right. even the crew right. itself. Three people, only three people on the summary will know where they are, and those are the people that work with navigation. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, hopefully they do, in fact, know where they are. The only thing I'm praying is, hey, man, when this thing comes to the surface, can it not be like the hunt for Red October where there's snow and I'm coming in? Oh, like, that would suck I mean, so could, bad. Can I just pop up where there's like a palm tree and a coconut man and like a girl in a grass skirt or something like that? You know what? That, that would as be- long as it's not snow. I just I hate snow. But yeah, if I'm on a submarine, I've been down for 95 days. Exactly. We finally go topside and you get that first breath of fresh air and it's like, are you effing kidding me? I'm in Toledo and our whole assignment has been in the Great Lakes. <laughs> right. Like, like, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to see like... I don't know. It'd be wild to be in a submarine and just wake up and be like, oh, we're at Russia now. Yeah. I mean, there is something to that. I just, man, that is, like I said, I'd rather be stuck on the space station than a submarine. I think that people, leave some yeah, but, but tip, man, compared to how much daylight we get to the rest of the United States, mm-hmm. just based on geographically where we were, I think you could find more people capable of not being able to deal with daylight. Uh, oh, in this sure. area, because you know we're not going to get like like sun until July, right? Once winter hits, like, three oh, months. Good. That's nothing. We got seven months of this. <laughs> yeah, right. But don't we have a bunch of subs out here? I think so. I mean, there's a naval base. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I guess that's the whole point of a submarine is to not be seen. So it's like mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you where we were. That, that, that's the whole thing. Like you know, like you might have a fleet out there. Is there a submarine under there? Just to make sure, it's kind of like you know, like I don't know. I don't. You, you I don't would know. always assume that they're. They don't even know. But I don't know. Right. I mean, the people on the ship don't know. The people on the submarine <laughs> don't know. Like you know, it's like yeah, that's a weird. I, I mean, the whole idea of it's just awkward. It's terrifying. Do you get paid more? You know what I mean? Like I'm in the navy, so I, I think everything's a I, scale. Can so. I just get on an aircraft carrier? Or they give you less cash for that. You know, like no, you're on a submarine, man. We pay you more money for a reason. Nah, man, I, I take aircraft carrier. Like, even if they're like, look, we'll pay you eight times as much. Like, no, I, I don't want to be in a submarine. Yeah. Right. It, well, the aircraft carrier seems cool. It, it does. There's, you can move around and stuff. Like like basketball yeah. courts. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's what they you're just, getting uh, I never yeah. hide it, basically. Yeah, <laughs> they got, they got you see them shooting hoops or whatever, but, like, you know, like, the submarines, like, it's small, it's tiny, there's no sunlight, no. and you don't know where the hell you're going. They just found the submarine off the coast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which is an incredibly popular destination mm-hmm. place. This submarine was not far offshore. I don't know why I'm so long to find it, but they just found it. And I think that they they took this submarine out of service based on drills. Uh, so they intentionally used torpedoes to sink this thing as a practice round. All right. It was 1938. So, like, when I'm reading that, I'm like, golly. And they, they just, just found it. They just found the damn thing. Well, there's submarines, I know, at least in a civil war. But uh, you, that's what I mean. Like, I, like that's ridiculous. Me, the technology is like, this is new. You know, I'm like, this damn thing's 100 years old. Right. You know, sit at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And just off the coast of one of the biggest beaches. And it's not far off. It's like a fourth of a mile. Really? Yeah. Huh. It was crazy. What uh, What did you sleep through? Or uh, what did you wake up to? 206-421. <laughs> I mean, I guess in their defense at that time, they probably thought they were the height of technology. It probably was. 
but it doesn't mean it's going to work. It's like, you know, it's like the Wright brothers. Everyone's like, man, they were the first guys to fly. Even if I'm around at that time, I'd be like, you guys go ahead and be first. One thing I learned from my father, he said, there's nothing wrong with being second. No. He said, you know, the guys landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong. I'm the first man on the moon. It's like, congratulations. That doesn't mean it's going to be successful. Because he goes, either you can be the second person to step on right. the moon buzz all, or you can be the first guy and to watch like, the other guy die it, on the moon. And it's like your, your old neighbor, Bob, who could, who, could, who could build a little plane out of a go-kart in his backyard, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, they, they build subs in South America all the time to transport drugs. Mm-hmm. They use diesel engines. You know, it's, it's mi- hundreds of miles. They run them through rivers. Somebody says, you know, like, hey, do you want to get on this homemade uh, submarine that Bob built? You'd be like, hell no. No. Hell no. I mean, I'd rather fall from the sky in your plane with a go-kart than I would I agree. drown in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But it is a business venture for the drug dealer. So, like, their subs are probably going to run over. You ever see the Coast Guards, like, jump on top of those things? Like, pull up a oh, side, yeah. like, four guys, like, jump on top of the guys. Well, it's a business venture, and some people are, some people owe a debt. That's why right. they're on the sub. That, exactly. And yeah, the Coast you're... Guard guys are jumping on there like, we're going to be flying this weekend. Oh, you're not getting arrested. We're just oh, taking yeah. the coke. <laughs> exactly. And they'd love Woo-woo. me. If I were in the Coast Guard, I'd be like, look, you guys need to go back, but I'm taking your drugs. What, what did you sleep through or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Kane. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Hey, guys. Uh, so I was woken up to loud banging on my bedroom door. Uh, it ended up being the local fireman. Apparently, someone tried burning down my apartment front door as I was sleeping. Jesus. My uh, wife. Yeah. Just your, the, did they try to start it for the entire apartment, or were they specifically just trying to smoke you out? No, so what they did, they took all, a lot of that uh, spam mail you get, or like all the I don't know, advertisements yeah. uh, at like the local mailbox area. They stuffed all that stuff underneath my, my front door like within the apartment and uh, lit it up and ran away, apparently. Now, <laughs> the, the natural thought process for any human being when this happens is, who has it out for me? Who hates me that <laughs> Who much? doesn't like me? Who have I right. pissed off? Uh, so right. how long did you noodle those? Po- it could have been a random dude who's just out of his mind, right? And he just picked your door. It could have been. But, but so, do- the weird thing is I'd only been in the apartment for like three months or something like that. At the time, I had just moved over to uh, Ohio, Dayton area, uh, uh, for, for work, uh, military. I mean, and, uh, and then it ended up, yeah, it was like, who who could have hated me so much already? <laughs> right, exactly. It's bad enough you're in Dayton, Ohio, and now someone tries to burn your apartment down. That's a message. <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah. Time to leave. I feel like if someone tried to burn down my home, I would know who it is. Like that's I, what I'm saying. I shouldn't have a roll of Well, it could be Eddie, John. I mean, like, you go, it's that one right. guy. Am, am that I, was I, was, I, too, was yeah. I too loud two weekends ago? Did I have the music yeah. up too loud? Is I mean, that a burn your house down? burn a house down? I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe they thought it was somebody else living there. Right. I mean, dog poop on my doorstep. Maybe I have my music too loud. Trying to burn my house down with me in it. Like, who hates me that much? Right. And did, did they ever figure out who did this? He's gone. Oh, he's gone? Okay. God, I feel damn, like... But, yeah, like you get a couple opportunities. You get a knock on the door, then there's a note or something. And you burning down an apartment's a long way. Because your music was too one loud. specific apartment in an apartment building too. Like this is yeah. this is you, right? They want you. Nobody. God else. damn. Yeah, I really feel like you should know who it is that wants you. But dead, I think dead. the mental aspect of that would be harder than the physical point of trying to put out the fire real quick. I think it would take me weeks because I would be. I, I have a hard time going to sleep. Is this person going to come back? They haven't caught this person. Who in the hell could this be? Mm. Like, what have I done? Well, you know look, I mean? if it's you, just know that it's me. But that, that, I mean, that, I can make, that's fair. You might want to ask yourself but, why. But this would bother me for like a month. Sure. So, like, so I calm down. Like, okay, what did I do? But not I mean, even just being at home. Anywhere I go now. Like, the person wants me dead. Yeah. Like, dead, dead. Is there a car following me? Right. Everything, Everything I do. Well, it's also weird. I had this once in a building where the guy, it's like the, it was a taller building. But all the decks went directly down, right? right? But if you were on the bottom floor, you had like a little patio area sure. out there. So the first year I lived in this building, I was not a very good neighbor. <laughs> but I, it had been a while. So there's one random Tuesday night, and I, the place above it was supposed to be empty. But whoever owned it had like their kids, like either their teenage kids were going over there, but I could hear people up there at night. So the next morning I get up, and my door is, the lock is glued. 
Like somebody <laughs> shot glue into my damn lock, which I didn't even know was a way to mess with people till this happened. Why? Wh- why were they focused on you? Were you being too loud? Or so was- that's the thing is that. <laughs> Somebody had puked and it had gone down and landed all over his area, and he was all huffing and puffing. I have to this day I don't know who this person is, but the, one of the dudes that worked in the building, he goes, "Well, you know, I, I assume that was you up here drinking or something last night and puked off the balcony." Now, if you know anything about me, like I'll I'll fess up, but when it's not me, I was like, Tee. "So it was the kids that were above right, so you." You better shut the like no right. And he's like, "Well, that's what he said," and this and that. And I was like, "Well, somebody's paying for this and that." And then I went down and chewed out the lady that ran my building. She was like, well, "We got a complaint," and I was like, "I don't give an ass." Right. You yeah. know what I mean? And I remember like I t- said anyhow, so this guy who I I to this day I don't know what he looked like. But for about two and a half weeks straight, every night when I got home, I would go to his door and bang on it. And he never answered. <laughs> never, you did bang on his door? Yes, for like two weeks straight. Every night I'd get home and be like, you know, like, answer the damn door. We have to have a right. communication. We have to have a little conversation. Right, here. it started, I'm sure, with Knox, but it was frustrating. Like, you glued. <laughs> you, you, I couldn't get in there. Like, you I had should to have pay glued for a his lock up, you know? Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll end the story yeah. there. Yeah. Nothing else happened. Yeah. I never told and then the Well, the other ends. crazy thing was I remember the locksmith <laughs> yeah. showed up, and the girl I was dating at the time, she goes, look, you go to work. I'll stay here and let them in. And I go, okay. And then the locksmith was giving her her crap, like, oh, somebody must really hate your boyfriend. Okay. Right? <laughs> she was she was finally just like, why don't you just shut up and fix the lock? Did you try any different strategies? Like, Pagliacci. All right. Well, that's what I'm saying. It started not, but then by, then, by, by the time you get to two weeks, I'm just like, you know, like, Open the right. door. Right. Like, now we're going to have a conversation. What did you sleep through, or what did you wake up to? 206 421 God, I'm still pissed about that. I wanted to yell at my old neighbor. Similar kind of situation. Loud music. The problem was it wasn't me, but I get a knock on my door before I'm going to work one day, and it is her son. It's an old lady. She's like 85 years old or something. So her son's about 50, but he knocks on my door. I'm young 30s. Open it. I've never seen this guy before in my life. But instantly, he's confrontational. He goes... My mother lives next door to you. I'm like, is she all right, man? I'm just like, yeah, she's all right. But she says that you keep cranking your music. I said, I don't. I mean, and all times in the morning, 3 o'clock, blah, blah, blah. I just went through all this stuff. And I said, bro, I'm working in radio. I work overnights. I'm not even home. So I can't say that no one's cranking music out of my place, but it's not me. And I don't live with anyone, right? So someone's breaking <laughs> in and cranking my stereo. That's basically what you're trying to explain to me. He doesn't believe me. I don't care. But I remember his parting words were, if she's got a problem, I got a problem. I said, I got no problem, bro. Let's close the door. <laughs> About two days later, now I'm dead asleep, man. And I'm thinking it's this guy again, all right? And I'm pissed. And I rip the door open. It's a cop standing there. And the cop's looking at me. I'm looking at him. I'm like, what, man? I mean, it's just the middle of the night. There's nothing going on. He's like... Were you, were you just cranking your stereo? I said, brother, I was in bed asleep until you pounded on my door. And he goes, look, I've been standing out here for like 10 minutes. I haven't heard anything. I said, right, because I've been asleep. He goes, well, the old lady next door. Well, he couldn't say who it was. So I got a complaint that someone was cranking their, their stereo. And I'm like, was it the lady next door? And he goes, well, I can't tell you that. I said, well, I'm going to let you know. It's the lady next door. She keeps saying this. I don't know what her goddamn problem is, but it's not me. Cop believes me because obviously he was standing there. Nothing going on. Yeah. About another week goes by. Not her son, but her son's wife. So her daughter-in-law knocks on my door. I open it. And I'm just like, you you people, you got to be kidding me. Like, it's getting to the point. I'm going to start hitting people, right? <laughs> She's like, no, no, no. I'm here to apologize. She said, uh, uh, my mother's been saying you're cranking your stereo. I'm like, I haven't been. I'm tired of hearing this. Like, I'm really, this is the last conversation I will have about this before things change, right? So she goes, well, we were in church and the air conditioning turned on. And my mother said, there's the stereo. And we realized every. Right. She's at that age where every time her air conditioning turned on. Like it messed up her hearing aid or some weird thing. Whatever it did. But the whole thing is like all this crap's coming at me. And I'm like, I'm not cranking my stereo. Your goddamn buffoon son came over. And he, I mean, I guess that's his version of a threat. I just I wasn't sweating him. But it's like, bro, shut up. You know, whatever. And then the cops show up. I'm like, all I've done is not crank my stereo. She's like, well, I just want to apologize. And the thing is, I want to go over there and spin that lady's face. The problem was she's 85. She's obviously losing her mind a little bit. And I'm like, I'm so angry at a crazy person. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. can't, you know, 
I can't do anything about it because it would look bad on me to confront an 85-year-old woman. I get this, but she made my freaking life miserable, man. What did you sleep through or what did you wake up to? 206-421-ROCK. Yeah, and it's worse when it, you, when, pe- when somebody getting you in trouble for something you didn't actually You didn't do right. it. And I'm like going through this over and over. Hello, Noah. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. 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 Yeah, it's Don. Oh, hello. Team. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Don. Hola. <laughs> Hey, no worries. So, uh, yeah, I had cornea surgery about six years ago. And uh, after they're all done, I woke up before they're actually done. They're still sewing my cornea. Ah, God, I was here not supposed to, right? But I, I don't know. <laughs> were, were they aware that you were awake? Oh, yeah, I woke up and started tapping my foot to the music. And they're like, hold on, slow down. We're still <laughs> tying you up here. And can you feel mm. this? I mean, obviously not the pain part, but I mean, do you feel the pressure of them tugging on your eyeball? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just like that. Just the tugging, the tying. So I could feel them every time they tightened up a stitch. And oh, yeah. What did you uh, what did you say? Do you know? I was like, hey, I'm awake still. <laughs> <laughs> did they put you back <laughs> under? Up, guys, and they're like, yeah, you're awake. Stay still. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, how much longer of the surgery did you have to endure? Oh, I don't know. I'd, I'd say about five, maybe ten minutes. Okay. Hey, but you could, you were awake, but as far as the anesthesia goes and the local stuff that they put in your eye, you couldn't feel what was going on. You just needed to stay still, right? Yeah, per, yeah exactly. Were you, were you still freaking out, though? Uh, no, I was pretty doped up. Ah, okay. I knew what was going on. I freaked out before, like, when they were willing me in. I was like, hey, guys, you got to numb up my eye or... Knocked me out or something. Right. Like, dude, we already did it. Yeah, man, I, dude, I, I was awake during my LASIK. This is way back in 1997. And they, they basically said, look, we're going to cut across the top of your eye with a laser. And then we're going to open up the flap. You just need to stay very, very still. And you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, God. But you're like, how, sounds how, like a tall order. How still do my eye, does my eye need to be? And then right. when, they, when, they pull the, <laughs> when they pull the flap back, look, man, I, I spent my younger years in caves growing up in West Virginia because they were just fun things to explore as a kid. Sure. You think that's complete darkness. You've never seen darkness like when you can't see. It's, right. it, I can't even describe to you. Is it just jet it's, black? It, it's almost just like space. It's, it's almost like not even a color. It's just weird. It's that's like, weird. It's nothing. It's like, it's like somewhere between a blank white canvas and total darkness. You know what I mean? It's just no. Like, it, it's it's so weird. Like you can't define what color it is. It's nothingness, huh? It is it is because you're not seeing anything. Oddly enough, I'd like to see that now. I know, I'm, just and without then, the eye surgery. And then when the flap went back over, and I could see. I was like, oh thank God, <laughs> oh thank God. <laughs> you think this is it? Ryan Castle coming up. We will sit and spend ten artists who hated their own hit songs right after your emails in the men's room at kisw.com. dot com. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's Impossible Escapes, Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.